Hello everyone, Raza here. In this video, we will explore important aspects of Power Automate Cloud Flows that every flow maker or user must be aware of. We will focus on three key areas, flow ownership, licensing, and API limits. So let's check it out in action. Power Automate is a comprehensive end-to-end -end cloud automation platform powered by low-code and AI. Within Power Automate, we can create different types of workflows. My focus will be on cloud flows, which allow us to create automations that can be triggered either automatically, instantly, or on a schedule. Automated cloud flows allow us to trigger the flow by an event, such as when a new email arrives in our mailbox or when a new item is created in a SharePoint list. Instant flows, also known as manual flows, begin the automation upon click of a button. We have the flow button for mobile, the flow can be triggered from a button click in Power Apps and more. And scheduled cloud flows provide us options to schedule the automation job. When we create flows, we can leverage a suite of connectors that have been provided for us. And these connectors have a classification associated with them. I'll create a new instant flow and add an action. Here I have the suite of connectors available for me. And these are categorized standard, are standard license connectors. Premium are connectors that require premium licensing. And then we have built-in actions. HTTP as an example within this requires a premium license. The connector documentation lists out each and every connector that's available as part of the Power Platform ecosystem. And here, the diamond symbol clearly indicates connector requires premium licensing. Right next to the name of the flow, there will be this diamond symbol. I have this flow called change primary owner of a flow. This flow leverages the following set of connectors. Dataverse is a premium connector. And that's the reason why this flow has been designated as a premium license. How do I know what specific license has been assigned to me? In the Power Automate portal itself, on the top right, if you go to settings, we have the option view my licenses. This will highlight the set of licenses that are assigned to you. And at the bottom will be the list of capabilities that have been made available for you. If we explore the Power Automate pricing page, the two license offerings are Power Automate Premium. This is per user per month. This allows a user access to unlimited cloud flows. There is also a Power Automate process license that includes cloud flows. This allows us to license a cloud flow that can be accessed by unlimited users in the organization. Another important aspect about flows is ownership. When you create a flow, you are by default the primary owner of that flow. We have the option to add additional co-owners to our flows. Owners have full control over the flow, including the ability to edit, manage, and delete it. They can determine who can access and use the flow, and they can share the flow with other users or teams within the organization. In cases where ownership needs to be transferred, such as when a flow owner leaves the organization or changes roles, providing a new flow owner ensures a smooth transition. The primary owner of a flow 
can have an effect on licensing associated with the flow. Let me explain. For automated flows or scheduled flows, the license check will be performed against the primary owner of the flow. My expense approval flow, that is premium, it's an automated flow. In the flow details section, the primary owner, Reza, and for plan, this flow runs on the owner's plan. In the co-owner section, if I click edit, I can add co-owners to my flow. This flow is triggered automatically when a new record is created in my Dataverse table. The license plan will run under the primary owner's account. So Reza must have a premium license because this flow requires premium licensing. Additionally, along with licensing, there is also request limits. These are known as your Power Platform request limits. For Power Automate, all actions in a flow, whether you're interacting with a connector, creating a variable, looping through a set of records, each and every action will be counted towards these limits. For users with the standard license for Power Automate, this API limit stands at 6,000. For users that have the premium per user license, that limit is 40,000. And for flows that have been designated with the process license, those flows will have the highest API limits. Please note, these API requests are for a 24 hour period. They reset every 24 hours. This flow has four actions. So every time the flow is triggered and the flow goes through all these actions, that will add a count of four to Reza's API requests. If this flow is called multiple times in a day, all of these flow runs and action calls will keep adding to Reza's API limits. If I have a loop scenario in my flow, and within that loop, I'm running multiple actions, the number of API limits would be the number of times the loop runs multiplied by the number of actions in that loop. So in this scenario, since Reza is the primary owner, all the actions in the flow that will add to the Power Platform API limits, those will be pulled against Reza's account. So you can see how important the impact of the primary owner of a flow is. And there will be scenarios where you would want to change the ownership of a flow. And to do that, in the flow details itself, if I go to edit, I have the option here to change the ownership of the flow. I change the ownership to James. Save. I'll click change owner. And now the primary ownership of the flow will transfer over to James. James is the primary owner of the flow. Reza and Sarah are co-owners. The license requirement falls under James's account. The API requests will be counted against James's account. Here I have another flow where I'm the primary owner. Let's try and change the ownership. Notice if I try and do this, it gives me a message that I cannot change the primary owner because this is a non-solution flow. To change the primary owner of a flow, you have to ensure that your flow is in a solution. It is a best practice to always start building your flows in solution context. There are various advantages to building in solutions. One of them is changing the primary ownership. You're in solutions. I can create a new solution. And from here, I can directly start creating my cloud flows. These are the three types. If you have a flow that's already existing and outside of solution context, automation, cloud flow, outside Dataverse, search for your flow, select your flow, 
click add and this will add your flow to the solution my flow that has been added now to the solution context this time if i click edit i do have the option to change the primary owner of the flow sarah becomes the primary owner raza becomes the co-owner now for instantly triggered flows in my scenario i am using a premium connector a premium license is needed but this time the license is needed for every user who runs the flow so for any of these manually triggered scenarios if your flow is designated with a premium license then any user that triggers that flow will require a premium license for instant flows the power platform api request limits will be consumed from the users who will run the flow and for scenarios where you need higher api limits you can assign a process license to the flow you can also have a service principal account owning a flow a service principal is a non human security identity it's a non interactive user it can't have a user license associated with it although you can make it the primary owner of the flow the connections that are going to be leveraged by the flow those connections have to be shared with the service principal it is subject to non licensed user limits that is well documented when the owners of flows change roles or leave the organization entirely at that instant you would need to go and change the ownership of the flow to a different user now if the owner of the flow is a service principal application user then that ownership isn't tied to a user that could leave the organization and that's a big benefit of leveraging spns to own cloud flows especially for your critical workflow scenarios for your cloud flows you have the option to associate apps and flows if i click edit here i can add an association to power apps i would like to associate this flow with this app the advantage here is these flows can run under the power apps license if you enjoyed this video then do like comment and subscribe to my youtube channel and thank you so much for watching